Uh, you know, the news over this past year has been so relentless. They've even created a term for what we're doing on social media, doom scrolling. Anybody else spend way too much time doom scrolling or am I the only one? COVID has just rocked our foundations. I mean, it, is, it has rocked all of us. And it's revealed just how much we don't like it when our comfort and our security are stripped away. This has been a very challenging year for my family. In a four month span, we lost four precious people, two to COVID complications, one to cancer, and one to a freak accident. That's just been an awful year. But Paul will continue to drag us back to this truth, and that is this, that in Christ we are overcomers. In Christ we are overcomers. But here's where you and I need to sit up and pay special attention and start taking some notes, because victory over our circumstances does not look like deliverance from our circumstances. Victory over our circumstances does not look like deliverance from our circumstances. This is what Paul says next. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. And as a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. Paul says what has happened to him has actually served to advance the gospel. And we've got to pause on this. We've got to pause on this because the second, since the second that God knocked him off his high horse on the way to Damascus, Paul's life has been anything but a cakewalk. I mean, we're talking about a guy who has from the moment he began to publicly share the truth about Jesus, he had Jews trying to kill him. He had best friends betraying him. He was persecuted and run out of nearly every city he visited. He was stoned. He was flogged. He was left for dead. He was shipwrecked three times. Stop taking a boat. Just stop. Stop taking, walk, get a camel, get a donkey bitten by a viper, and then he gets thrown in jail. And listen now, all for doing exactly what God told him to do. God knew exactly where Paul was. God knew exactly how this was going to play out. But Paul's vision of Jesus is so rich and it's so robust that Paul is chained to a guard and he's like, eh, it's great. It's advancing the gospel. Who does that? You know, we get lulled into this belief and it's the American way, that life is just kind of supposed to be comfortable and that things are just supposed to work out. And so we get really, really rattled when they don't. But Jesus and Paul and every single one of the disciples except John was martyred for doing exactly what God told them to do. Now, does this mean we're supposed to go out and martyr ourselves for the faith? No, but it might mean that God has you at that job you hate because it could actually serve to advance the gospel. It might mean that God wants you to keep showing up for that person who makes you crazy and doesn't appreciate you because it actually could serve to advance the gospel. Maybe you find yourself in a season of singleness right now, not because there's something wrong with you, because there's nothing wrong with you, but at this particular season in your life, this is God's plan that would actually advance the gospel. And let's flip it. Let's flip it around. So you just got a big raise. 
What if before you run out and buy a brand new car, you say, Lord, how could this actually serve to advance the gospel? Or maybe you just bought a bigger house. I love a bigger house. There's nothing wrong with a bigger house. But maybe God allowed that bigger house so you could fill it with unbelievers and you could actually serve to advance the gospel. I am telling you, I'm going to say this tonight, and I believe it with all my heart, that Paul's imprisonment was God's plan to advance the gospel. 